Welcome to today's joint webcast with BlackBerry on proven strategies for successful mobile initiatives. During today's webinar, Harmony VP Product Strategy David Lavender and BlackBerry Senior Business Development Manager James Wang will detail three real-world high-value business use cases that demonstrate how SharePoint can drive business initiatives. Before we get started, you're welcome to submit questions at any time using the chat feature. We'll address them during the QA session at the end of the session. To test the chat feature before we get started, please write the country you are from in the chat window on the right-hand side of your screen. If we don't manage to answer all your questions, someone will follow up with you shortly via email. We'll also make a recording of this webcast available to you within the next few days. Starting us off today is James Wang, Senior Business Development Manager, Desktop and Productivity at BlackBerry, focused on enabling business critical applications within the BlackBerry ecosystem. James has filed nine patent applications in the fields of VoIP, Wi-Fi, and security, and has worked on strategic initiatives with top-tier corporations. James' unique ability to translate between business and technical worlds makes him particularly effective at synthesizing multi-vendor products into practical, compelling solutions. James, please start us off. Thank you. Let me just get my slide up here. Perfect. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'd like to take uh, today's opportunity to do uh, a few things. Uh, firstly, uh, we're going to be focusing uh, the majority of our webcast on uh, the real-world business use cases uh, that we think are applicable in your particular uh, circumstances. Secondly, we want to focus a little bit on uh, the various form factors when we talk about mobile. So we'll take a look at both smartphones and tablets, and then in particular also demonstrate the Harmony application uh, in its native uh, deployment uh, when we talk about uh, a mobile deployment here. So that's what we're going to be doing for today. What I'd like to do uh, as well is set the stage a little bit here uh, in terms of the BlackBerry platform and what we can do, uh, particularly when we talk about uh, three main things. Number one, uh, managing devices. So uh, obviously a key part when we talk about a multi-platform uh, strategy, being able to manage not only BlackBerry devices, but uh, iOS and Android devices, both smartphones and tablets. Secondly, uh, a, a critical factor from a BlackBerry platform perspective, security. Uh, not only from a native BlackBerry device perspective, but also extending out to the iOS and Android side of things. And for the folks who uh, haven't had uh, a chance to uh, get some more information on this, BlackBerry does have a solution around BlackBerry Workspaces, uh, which is a very uh, similar containerized uh, solution uh, that is available on uh, both iOS and uh, Android. Uh, and finally, being able to manage uh, the applications, and in particular, uh, the Harmony application across uh, all the mobile devices and mobile platforms uh, that you have chosen to deploy. So really the, uh, the, the platform that stitches this together for us is the BlackBerry Enterprise Service, uh, or BES 10 for us. And uh, being able to uh, manage devices, being able to provide that security container uh, on multiple uh, OSs, and being able to uh, manage the app distribution uh, is, uh, is a key element uh, to what we'll be speaking about today. One more piece here that we'll speak to is uh, the BlackBerry and Harmony partnership. Uh, we've been working quite closely with uh, the Harmony team now for uh, probably close to two years uh, and uh, have built uh, an extremely strong platform when it comes to uh, mobile collaboration from a, uh, an Office 365 and a SharePoint perspective. I'll also take uh, the opportunity today to mention that uh, BlackBerry's newest device, the BlackBerry Passport, was recently released. Uh, I believe six days old uh, and uh, currently available in uh, 34 countries uh, worldwide. Just uh, a quick piece of news on this one. Uh, we actually sold out uh, via our online channels 200,000 devices uh, in the first six hours. So uh, extremely pleased to hear uh, those kinds of stats. Uh, additionally, the Harmony application uh, is uh, fully compatible with the BlackBerry Passport uh, and was made available at uh, launch uh, to be able to support the new device. In addition, just to mention uh, a few of the features that are unique to BlackBerry, uh, Harmony is available on BlackBerry 10 natively, 
uh, and uh, is part of uh, or leverages the share framework to be able to do things like easily collaborate uh, with your colleagues, whether that be sending uh, documents uh, via email, uh, BBM, uh, or through some other cloud service that you may be using. Uh, and as well as fully uh, integrated with BlackBerry's native uh, docs to go suite, uh, which enables uh, full editing uh, on device and is a, obviously a, a great use case when you talk about uh, the larger screen as part of the BlackBerry Passport. As well, we'll uh, do a quick review at the end as well, uh, but uh, just to mention real quickly, uh, the Harmony application is available through your BlackBerry Direct Sales Rep uh, and available through selected resellers. And one final quick point here. Uh, for our customers who did uh, use the BlackBerry SharePoint client for our older BlackBerry devices, BBOS, uh, Harmony is our recommended go-forward solution, uh, both for Black BlackBerry 10 and for BlackBerry Secure Workspace. And with that, I'll pass it back to Liara. Thank you very much, James, for that insight into BlackBerry. And now let's take our first poll. Our first poll question is, what do you need to do today on your mobile device? Do you edit and share documents, reach out to colleagues, participate in important discussions, or stay up to date with projects. I'll just give you a few moments to vote. Okay. I think just a couple more seconds. <coughs> wow, great. Okay. It looks like the vast majority of you, that's 92%, mostly use your mobile devices to view, edit, and share documents, with half of you reaching out to colleagues as well, 33% participating in important discussions, and quite a lot, 42 staying up to date with projects. Great. Let me introduce our next speaker, David Lavender, who is Vice President of Product Strategy at Harmony, a leading provider of mobile collaboration products. David has been a regular contributor at Fast Company for over five years, focusing on how business and people are impacted by new technologies. He has also been published in the Financial Times, Business Week, Entrepreneur, and other leading press outlets. David has recently completed a graduate degree in science, technology, and society, investigating how information overload in organizations has evolved since the introduction of email. David is also an international scholar for the Society of the History of Technology. David. Over to you. Okay, thanks, Liara, and uh, good afternoon. Good morning to all the participants. Uh, looking at the poll results that we just saw, I think we are in good agreement with what uh, industry pundits like uh, like Gartner are talking about. Where we are today in the evolution of the mobile enterprise, or which is now being called even more the digital enterprise. <clears throat> it seems that the EYOD programs are well developed, a lot of companies are uh, rolling out mobile devices, and uh, for, the, for the most part, and this is the information I was presented at a recent Gartner conference, uh, folks have figured out about email account and contacts, which are focused primarily on the personal productivity element. Of, uh, of using mobile device, but trying to figure out how to go to that next step, how the organization as a, as a group can find value is really where the, uh, the industry seems to be uh, stuck. So uh, the way Gartner uh, looks at it, they look at three really main elements as the next step of what they call the second tier of value, where the first tier of value primarily focuses on personal productivity, and the second tier uh, is, uh, goes to that organizational productivity level. So the first element is the, the uh, piece of uh, content creation, not just uh, send e emails or look at calendar events, but now really starting to look at uh, creating uh, documents, uh, communicating with people through communications, unified communications, video conferencing, and so on. Second piece is reviewing content. So a really nice case, and we'll look at this in just a bit, is uh, being able to annotate PDF documents on the go from a, from a tablet or a phone, um, or highlighting or commenting on documents that you've been sent. 
And uh, the third piece is uh, high value content consumption. And we'll look at an example of this as well. You know, for expensive employees, time is money. For emergency personnel, time translates into saving lives. So high value documents, things like emergency documents or uh, documents that executives need to see, making that available to people when they need it on the go is, is hugely important. So you'll notice that the second tier focuses a lot around documents. And SharePoint and Office 365 are going to play a major role in this, uh, in this driving of mobile initiatives because almost 80% uh, of organizations today use SharePoint for managing and sharing documents. So it's a key uh, in this entire mobile enterprise. So whatever strategy you take, using secure enterprise tools you have in-house, like Office 365 and SharePoint, are going to be key parts of reaching this second tier of value. Now, that's maybe easier said than done. Right? So uh, it's, we got some nice theory from Gartner saying that there's some um, how to, what, what you should do in terms of uh, content and how to roll it out and, and uh, what these cases are. But how exactly do you do this? How do you give mobile workers secure access to important documents and let them work on the documents all on the go? So the, the one is simple, but how do you do this? Okay, so there's got to be a strategy. And if you want to succeed in it, just making tools available, we all know that doesn't work, right? You know, we build it, people will come, it doesn't, never, never works. How good the tools are, or how um, how uh, uh, you know how compelling the uh, the use, the use case is per se. Uh, it, it, the value to the user has to be really high, and the amount of work necessary to adopt the tools has to be very low. That combination is what gets the uh, allows us to take that next step. So it's got to be really simple for people to switch. And the value of what it is you're providing has to be perceived by the individual users as something that's quite high. So let's take a look at three real-world examples of how you can uh, use these three cases as a way to move your mobile initiative, initiative forward. The first one comes from the world of finance. And uh, this is a, um, uh, a use case where we want to provide secure access to important documents and, and emails to people in, uh, in banks, uh, account managers, for example. And this is really a, a, a case that's been taken from Harmony customers, including one which is a, a NIBC, which is a bank, uh, a European bank, uh, who's doing mobile uh, collaboration. Uh, but it equally can apply to any other financial services company, insurance companies, investment companies, professional services. And the, you know, the business value of something like this is you, you want to be able to provide the documents but pro avoid the data leakage, right? So just giving people consumer-like tools like Dropbox, MyCloud, things like that, well, that might be able to allow them to share documents, but that's really not very safe and there's lots of uh, gotchas involved in doing that. So uh, particularly financial services companies don't want to go that route. Uh, you've got lots of compliance requirements. and um, you you, uh, you can't afford costly mistakes when uh, when the stakes are quite high. So what what Harmony brings to the table here is a sing, is an intuitive single screen experience that supports the full business taxonomy for metadata in SharePoint, so that you can classify documents accurately, that so they can be found later. Uh, it, it's able to you can save um, uh, uh, email messages in SharePoint uh, and. Uh, it also is a secure uh, platform together with, with BlackBerry. Uh, and the ability also not just to view documents, but also to be able to uh, edit them uh, as well. So the three steps you really need to do to, to fulfill this use case. And, and these, each of these three use cases are really almost they're, they're, uh, roadmap type uh, uh, cases that you can take in-house and use yourself to uh, to build your initial steps to getting this mobile uh, mobile initiative off the ground. So the first one is you got to get a secure infrastructure in place because without that secure infrastructure, you're you're really putting your organization at risk. Documents can get lost, leakage, and all the other things we talked about. Secondly, you need to be able to view and follow the business related criteria using metadata because one of the biggest problems with using using any sort of centralized document storage facility 
or uh, documents store and uh, sync, share and sync uh, uh, program, is that uh, these these repositories very often just become document graveyards. So you, you can you can put stuff in the, in there. Uh, very hard to find it afterwards. So the use of the judicious use of metadata for being accurately classifying information, so you can then find it later, is, is absolutely critical to the success of this uh, of this initiative. And doing that from a mobile device uh, is is uh, is imperative, and it's not all that simple to do. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, and the third case is to be able to, as, as I said before, is not just to uh, access a document, but also to be able to view and edit the documents so that you can do work and collaboration is commenting and contributing and sharing so that everybody's working on the same project uh, at the same at the same time. So let's take a look at each one of those three elements. The first one is providing a secure infrastructure. So uh, James talked about the uh, containerized uh, uh, approach uh, and BlackBerry. And you see here an example of Harmony running within that, that container on a BlackBerry uh, 10 device. Uh, this is a, a great example of how to uh, maintain that information within a secure container uh, and, and fulfill the compliance requirements necessary for high security environments. Secondly, uh, you have to be able to see the metadata. So here you see an example of a document that's being opened uh, through Harmony that's uh, stored in, in SharePoint. And you see on the document that uh, not only can you see the information about the name of the document at the top, but you can also see uh, who created the document. You can see the entire document history. And you can also see all the metadata at the bottom. And this metadata is not just view only, but it's information that can be changed. It's information that can be edited from the device. Uh, it's, edit it's information you can use to search. So you can, uh, when you work with a well-defined taxonomy, it's very easy to find documents later on. And one of the unique capabilities that, that Harmony brings to the table is that when you upload a document uh, and you have required metadata, you are prompted to specify the metadata at the time of upload so that, that information, you can be sure that that information gets uh, is defined correctly uh, and that you don't end up with just a lot of um, uh, junk in your, in your SharePoint or Office 365 repository. And thirdly, uh, you want to be able to view and edit the document securely using tools that you're familiar with so that uh, it's very easy to, um, to work. You don't want to introduce new things that people are not familiar with because then, again, you have the problem of changing user behavior. So within that environment, being able to use familiar uh, document editing tools uh, is very important to be able to allow people to, uh, to engage and to, um, uh, to adopt the, the products quite simply. Okay, so that's the first first use case of uh, finance, and as I said, uh, this is a, a, a an example where uh, you can really use this um, uh, as a as a roadmap for mapping out how you roll out your initiative and uh, setting up your metrics by what it is that you want to uh, you want to achieve. The first uh, uh, slide that talks about the the particular values of the use case, and we'll see two more in just a moment give you that indication of what it is that you need to be monitoring in order to, to articulate the value uh, internally of the, uh, of the, uh, the mobile initiative. Uh, it's a very different approach than you know, some companies initially try to just do these, these very broad mobile initiatives or saying we're going to give people tools and, and, and see what happens. Uh, it's very difficult in that instance to be able to articulate what value the company got out of it. And that's the, the point of these use cases is to focus specifically on, uh, on very high value business use cases so that you can, you can see that very, very quickly and then move on and add additional cases uh, as time goes on. Okay, Leora, are we going to take another poll? Sure, thanks David for that very practical use case. Let's take our second poll. What is your current strategy for deploying mobile apps and services? Is it individual initiative, IT pilot phase, department-wide initiative, enterprise-wide implementation, or no current strategy in place? And I'll just give you all a couple of minutes to vote. OK. People still voting.
Okay. Re results are in. It looks quite varied, actually. It looks like most people have an enterprise-wide implementation, about 40% of you, followed by 23% with no current strategy in place or IT pilot phase, and very few of you have an individual initiative with 8%, and also department-wide initiative with 8%. And now let's go back to David. Okay, thank you, Lyra. So looking at our results, we see that we've got uh, over 60% uh, have not yet reached the stage of um, enterprise-wide implementation. I think that's, that's a good indication of, uh, of, of the, uh, the industry numbers. Uh, and uh, the focus is, is at some of the smaller stages, and this is a good point, a good uh, point in time to engage and to look at some of these specific use cases. So let's go on to the next use case. Uh, and this one is emergency response. Uh, it's a highly mobile industry, and connectivity to what's, what's unique about this, and, and uh, it shares some um, characteristics with some other industries that I'll mention at the end, is that connectivity to the corporate infrastructure is very often not dependable due to poor signals in remote areas, for example. And when workers are called to the scene of an, of an accident, uh, an incident or a disaster, they have to have access to very important safety procedures and uh, documentation, or to be able to quickly reach out to subject ex uh, matter experts to resolve urgent issues. So that's a really key uh, use of being able to get in that information on mobile devices is, uh, is, is really high value here. And uh, there's also a, a, another point to that, we'll go to the next slide, is that besides the, um, uh, the high value of, of saving lives, and mitigating environmental disasters, potentially. There's also an enormous uh, cost savings associated with the reduction of paper that's necessary for people to carry around with them. And every time you come up with a new uh, revision of emergency documents or of standard operating procedures, you've got to print them, you've got to distribute them, people have to carry them out. And there's an enormous cost associated with that of the printing, distribution, and uh, recycling of those uh, of those documents. If there's just a way to automate that and push the documents out to people on their mobile devices so they could have them available when, they're, um, uh, when they need them when they're offline, that would be an awesome, uh, an awesome use case. And that's, that's the second use case that we're, we're showing here. Now, some of the, the reasons for adoption, um, you know, the, having the latest version of a key document is uh, potentially life-saving, you know, uh, being able to have those uh, th those documents is key, uh, and being able to push them out uh, of, uh, also over its uh, error. So let's take a look at some of the, the key requirements to fulfilling this particular use case. So one is uh, full document and people search, because you also want to be able to reach individuals uh, who you may need to call and get some information from. Uh, you want to push the uh, latest documents out to people, and you want to, as I said, uh, have a vast reduction in, in paper-based overhead. These are really the key criteria for a successful um, implementation of this use case. So let's specifically look at each of those three. The first uh, one is to allow people to, to get full document and people search. And you see a screen here that shows uh, profile information displayed on Harmony of um, a uh, Deborah Dawson's uh, profile you see here on the screen. is uh, It comes from the Harmony application, and it shows her SharePoint profile. So not only do you see details about her expertise, which you can uh, search for, you can also reach out to Deborah. You see her email address. You see her phone. If this was a phone, you'd be able to click on that link or click on the email link, and it would automatically launch the application. So being able to respond instantaneously by finding the experts uh, is, uh, again, potentially life-saving uh, in doing this on the device uh, on the go. Um, now. Having access to those emergency documents uh, offline is important, and there's a way to even do that through Harmony of automating the pushing of the latest versions so that you don't have to rely on the individuals to update their own documents or have somebody manually push those documents out, but you have periodically with updates, have the documents loaded onto the individual uh, tablets or phones so that people, when they're out in the field and they don't have connectivity, will automatically have access to those latest documents. 
And the, uh, the third point is, um, as I said, is a vast reduction of paper-based overhead by having those documents and being able to see those documents wherever you are, whether you're connected or not, reduces that necessity to uh, provision people with paper-based documents that they have to lug around with them uh, and then worry about whether they've got the latest copy or not and then uh, figure out what to do when they need to, uh, to get rid of the documents. So the two cases that we looked at so far are industry specific. In fact, the, uh, the emergency response case that I mentioned is, is equally uh, valid for many other industries where remote workers uh, are often out of range from the corporate connectivity. So things like uh, energy, oil and gas, uh, utilities, uh, any of those types of even uh, local government sometimes who have surveyors who go out. Any of those types of industries have very similar use cases, uh, and, and those are, are very good uh, use cases for those particular industries. Now, there are some other use cases which are more horizontal or apply to multiple organizations, multiple industries. And let's just take a look at one here, which is one that applies to every organization, and uh, both in industry and also in government, and that's project management. Right? So, we all attend meetings, uh, and we all uh, use SharePoint to improve efficiency, transparency, and execution of those meetings, or we could use them if we don't today. And whether those meetings are for product launches or sales reviews, planning events, senior executives, they all, uh, regardless of what it is, they all have some core requirements. So, for example, one is they have the, there's a necessity to have a pre-assembly of content. So typically there's reference materials that have to be supplied beforehand or documents that uh, track a, a project that people need access to. And people who attend these meetings or attend uh, participate in these projects need to have the latest updated copy. But not just of documents. They also need to have uh, copies of to-do lists, calendars, announcements, and uh, uh, people who contact information about people who are on the projects as people um, uh, uh, join and leave the project over time. Uh, so being able to see, kind of track the project as it's going is, very, is a very important uh, piece. So let's take a look at the, um, the three requirements ne necessary to fulfill the project management uh, um, use case. So one of them is uh, easy publishing of project-related content, right? Projects, I always say projects travel on their, on their, uh, on their documents. Let's paraphrase the, uh, another famous saying. And that could be things like project plans. It could be task lists. It could be um, uh, documentation associated with specifications that need to be tracked and updated. So easy publishing of that content and making it available uh, is very important to, uh, uh, to standardizing that. You know, just sending email attachments where people uh, uh, pass along a document uh, and then send the same attachment to 10 people where it gets replicated, uh, creates, just creates document chaos. So having some formal way of doing that, but doing that in a way that's really easy for people to be able to do, they don't have to learn something new, is a key requirement for this, uh, for this fulfill, fulfilling this requirement. Secondly, it's not just about documents, right? It's also about pro projects, also have many other elements related to them. So calendar, uh, up, you know, calendar uh, uh, project calendar, of activities that need to be, um, and milestones that need to be met. So sharing that and making that available to people is really important. Uh, following people's tasks, assigning tasks, completing tasks, those need to be done as part of a project. And be able to do that easily and to track that is, is, is super important. And also to make announcements and to follow announcements. So there's all these different elements of a project. If you could have that in a single screen and have people be able to participate and follow and, and contribute would be a huge win. And that's, a, uh, that, that's really what this, the Harmony story is about. We'll see some screenshots, examples of how this, how this comes about. But even uh, documents and all the other uh, artifacts of projects, that's, that's not even enough. Because what you want to do in a project is to follow the conversations and follow the, the progress of the activities and the tasks and the, and the document uh, changes without having to go and poll for them. You don't want to come in every morning and have to go through, like you do with email, go through an inbox and start going through the list for every item that you have in a project. 
what, the, what you really want to do is just to have a window that would show you all the updates, uh, almost like a Twitter stream of updates of the project that would allow you to uh, stay on top of what's going on and also to drill down and participate where necessary. So those are the three pieces. Let's take a look at how they look. So this is these, again, are Harmony screens. And in the same application where you do the document sharing, you can see that you have access to your SharePoint team calendar. You have information you can drill down and look at events. Again, you can edit the events. These are not uh, strictly view, view only, but if you have the credentials in SharePoint or Office 365 to make changes, you're able to do that directly from the same app where you're working on the documents and, and sharing contact information and so on. Uh, and you also can see on the screen in the back, you have, all you have access to multiple calendars uh, and, and you can uh, uh, track different projects all within a single, single screen. Um, you can also uh, look at other things, and you'll see at the bottom of the screen uh, 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 there's also other elements related besides just tasks. You see that there's uh, contact information, there's tasks, uh, there's customer information, different types of SharePoint lists. So now you have full read-write access to all the different SharePoint list artifacts as well as documents, all within a single screen, all within a single application, and most importantly, within the context of work. So when you're working on a project, you have all the elements in a single screen. You can click on one, drill down, uh, then go. You don't need to open another application to see. Uh, for example, we were looking at documents. You don't need to open another application to see anything about tasks. It's all done within the same context of that project. And one of the most unique pieces of, of Harmony is, is what we call the activity stream. And you see that in the screen here where on a mobile device or uh, also on a desktop, you can follow conversations. You can follow, you see here, uh, some of these updates are Yammer updates. Some of these are uh, SharePoint or Office 365 updates. And you can follow these directly in a single screen. So within Harmony, you can select uh, people you want to follow. You, you can follow uh, documents or document libraries. You can follow views, tags, uh, any way that you can uh, classify information, you can set up views so that you can follow those types of information. Within a context of a project, you can follow all the project updates and then filter based on are these discussions, are these documents, are these lists. And not only follow them, but also uh, participate. I could drill down on these and click on a document. It will open the document. And check the, I can check the document out and work on it. I can participate in a Yammer discussion. I can uh, also uh, access lists and make changes to those all within that one screen. So this, this uh, uh, activity stream truly becomes your, your, your single pane of glass that allows you to, to follow the project without having to have a, a, a pile of different applications that you need to toggle between and try and figure out what the big picture looks like. So that's the, the third uh, project. Uh, the third uh, use case, and uh, we do is we invite you to uh, take some uh, uh, take some additional steps here with us. Uh, one is, um, and these are all QR codes that you can uh, uh, snap and get the links directly to. These um, slides and the entire recording will be made available to all the participants and registrants, so you'll have access to to this uh, shortly. Uh, but the three things that uh, we invite you to do, one is to get seed licenses uh, through, through BlackBerry and, and uh, try this out uh, yourselves. Uh, you can also contact us to schedule a consultation with experts to look at some of your use cases and we can help you apply some of the things that we've talked about here to your own particular environment and help you get started. It'd be very practical in terms of getting the value out of uh, your, your current investment in SharePoint can be able to show, uh, uh, realize the anytime, anywhere uh, uh, enterprise through use of uh, mobile technology. Uh, and for those of you who are interested, there's a guide to mobile collaboration which outlines uh, the top things that you need to consider when looking about looking to mobilizing your uh, your organization and um, uh, providing that access, the anytime, anywhere access. Uh, to uh, uh, to your your workforce. 
So with that, I conclude the, uh, uh, this phase, and I turn it back over to uh, Leora for uh, uh, questions. Thanks, David. Thanks for those detailed business case studies, which I'm sure our listeners can relate to. And now let's take some questions. I've had a bunch of questions come in, but don't forget you can still, in the chat section, write in more questions. I'm still watching. I've had, let's see, the first question that came in is from, this is for you, David, actually. You talked about mass appeal apps. In your experience, are there certain industries where this is more true than others? Yeah, so um, uh, thanks for that. Um, th there are particular industries where that, that uh, uniquely lend themselves to having more uh, obvious use cases for mobile workers. So we talked about some of them where you have a lot of remote workers, high-value remote workers, utility, utilities, oil and gas, uh, emergency response for some. Uh, construction is an enormous uh, market for mobile uh, enterprises because people are always out in the field, often in places where there's not very good connectivity. Uh, uh, local government, federal government uh, also can be, um, uh, can be one where you've got people uh, out and about. But there are, uh, I think almost any industry today has uh, cases where remote workers need to be able to access information and participate in projects when they're not sitting at their desk. So I think the, the short answer is uh, this applies to everyone. I think the maybe a bit longer is that there, there are probably some industries that have more obvious cases th than others, but I think equally uh, applicable to, uh, to almost every industry out there today. Okay, thank you, David. And this next question is for you, James. Do you see companies rolling out mobile strategies as a separate initiative, or is it part of a broader enterprise collaboration strategy? Yeah, I think that's a, a great question. I think um, you know when it comes to mobility and the enterprise, uh, probably the answer to that maybe I would say maybe three or four years ago might be uh, mobile as a, a special project or one that uh, gets engaged upon uh, separately. But uh, in in today's day and age. Uh, particularly when it comes to mobile. Uh, I think uh, the thought is uh, mobile first, uh, and then uh, maybe some of the other uh, pieces like uh, desktop will come after that as well. So I think we've, we've gone through a shift where uh, mobility plays a key piece in daily business uh, and affects uh, the projects uh, uh, every day, not, uh, not as a separate thought, but as one of the core tenants. Uh, of particular projects, so uh, it's uh, it's a great question. I think uh, it applies universally now when it when we come uh, when we speak about mobile uh, and how it gets applied to uh, to projects today. Okay, thank you, James and David. This one's for you. What's more effective, using a business specific use case or a more generic use case like project management? So I think again, here, the here it depends on, uh, on on where the project gets started from. I think. You know, any any case, whether it's it's more horizontal or more specific use case, there have to be key metrics that you can track and see uh, what was the project successful or not, as we showed in the three cases here. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to to be able to articulate the value to uh, to management that this is worth investing in. So uh, I think in industries where um, you know where it's possible to have a high value business, specific business use case, it's a great place to start because it's very um, localized and you have more control and then you can use and build upon that success. Um, but you can also take a broader case and start with a smaller group, a group that's more motivated or perhaps has more expertise. This was uh, the approach taken at NIBC, was, uh, was done exactly that way, and then grow from there. I think regardless of which way you go, the key message is, is to start small, Start with a group that you can uh, learn from, uh, lessons learned, and then take what you've learned and build that out to a, to a larger audience. Great. Thanks, David. And this last question is for you, James. How do we buy this product? Perfect. That's uh, a great question on that, uh, on that front. Um, so I did hint at it uh, in the beginning, but uh, maybe just to reemphasize, uh, BlackBerry and Harmony have a strong partnership, and uh, BlackBerry is uh, reselling the uh, the Harmony product. So, so for the folks who do have a BlackBerry account rep, uh, please feel free to reach out to them directly, uh, and they'll be more than happy to, to walk you through the purchase process. 
We also have uh, selected resellers uh, enabled to be able to uh, handle your particular orders. And for the folks who don't have uh, either a selected reseller or a uh, BlackBerry uh, direct sales rep, I'm happy to get you guys connected. Um, so feel free to send me a quick email. I'm at jawang at blackberry.com. jawang at blackberry.com would be more than happy to get you uh, connected. Great. Thanks again, James and David. And I'd like to thank everyone else for joining us today. Don't forget a recording of this web class will be available to you within the next few days on our website. And we look forward to meeting you again at our next webinar. Bye now.